Hello, Solar Loon here, and here is another Let's Learn From video. Uh, this one will be, will be on Caster. Um, last time I, I did a Let's Learn From video, or I tried to do a Let's Learn From video, I ended up doing a Let's Play, and that was of Lyle of Cube Sector. I didn't intend to do a Let's Play uh, originally, so I kind of messed that up. Um, this time around, I'm going to basically be focusing more so on a specific feature of the gameplay, and you know, giving my thoughts on what I liked about it. And, uh, and kind of going from there. Um, this game uh, is the first thing that I'm gonna, you know, try out, try and do a let's learn from video on. I might go back to the island cube sector or something like that. Um, the good thing about this is that if I find other parts of the game I like or that could be improved on uh, later, um, then I can come back and make another let's learn from video on that part. So let's go ahead and jump in. I'm gonna go ahead and make a new game here. Um, and you have an ability to choose your character here, boy, girl, light, light and dark skin, basically. So we'll be the dark guy, oops. <laughs> we'll be the dark guy and uh, name him appropriately. Alright, let's go ahead and choose a normal difficulty and jump in here. Let's make a new save slot. Yes. Alright, so I'm just going to basically start a basic uh, level. This game is an indie game made by Ella... <laughs> Snap, I don't want to get this wrong. Uh, Ella Com, I think? Oh, uh, let me look it up. Hold on. Ella, Cor Ella Corn. Ella Corn. Okay. So, yeah. <clears throat> so, it seems like you're basically in this game, you're a kid who basically is trying to fight uh, flanks, or which are aliens, slash restore areas. Um, I played this before I beat it in, like, a s an afternoon. It's a fun game. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a fun game. It's available on Desura for, uh, I think, five bucks. So it's pretty good. I got it in a bundle a while back on the indie game store. And I... Uh... <coughs> Man, something is in my throat from this. Uh, I got it on the indie game store. It was a nice little uh, bundle pack. So anyway... Yeah, so, hello Solar Moon, my name is Anna, I'm your mission director, this first mission is just a routine training exercise, etc. Alright, so this is teaching you how to play, so you can move around, you can dash, you can double jump, like so. And you get different weapons by running into those spheres, those walls. And then you can shoot with the right out, uh, right trigger. You can aim with the right stick. Pretty pretty standard stuff. Um, something I really liked about this game was basically the controls. Um, well, the controls are a little a little awkward, but only for me because. Well, actually, yeah, that's more my bad than anything. Um, I would like more so to have the shoot button be on the right, um, like R1 button, just because it seems more. Less awkward to me, at least for my controller. That's just a personal thing. It doesn't have anything to do with the game. Um, since you can re reconfigure the controls. So as you can see, it's a pretty standard little action-adventure kind of thing. Ah, there we go. Um, so something I liked about this game was basically... Skip that for now. Something I liked about this game was basically the uh, music. It's pretty, like, bumping, you know, kind of cool music, kind of, you know, trance music, which is... Uh, it matches the game. It's just uh, something you don't really hear a lot from video games. It's, it's kind of a nice you know thing to hear. This kind of electronic music. So I'm going to hit, going around here. I'm trying to collect these energy um, balls in the. Yeah, you, know, you can see on the radar they're pulsing blue, and it's a you know pretty basic first mission. <coughs> pretty basic first mission. Um, I have. You can you can shoot these trees to get you know more uh, like a little bit more energy, which is a nice little touch, just kind of to add some interactivity. You have these monsters here that you can shoot and fight. Pretty basic stuff, nothing special yet. So I'm just running through a basic little uh, a little basic gameplay here. It's pretty fun. I, 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 you know, I like the way that the controls work. They're they're pretty responsive. 
free response is pretty tight. Um, it gets a lot more interesting <laughs> later on, so I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, like, beginning part. Um, just for the sake of, I think, keeping the video point, like, nice and pointed, I'm going to basically say, I'm going to cut out the rest of this and, and just go ahead and finish a few missions, farm some, some, uh, finish a few missions, farm some, uh, points that you can use to upgrade yourself and get, like, better weapons, better attacks, better... Uh, skills, things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it here and then come back later. Okay, so I just went through the first mission and got some points here. And then I went ahead and uh, upgraded my dash and my super jump. And we'll also upgrade the pulse weapon. So the good thing that I liked about this game, basically I wanted to highlight, was just the feeling of getting better. Like you actually uh, getting faster and, and moving quicker and, and all that stuff through the upgrade system. It really feels tactile. It really feels... Like, you are indeed getting a lot better. Um, let's see. I'll give an example of this. There's an effective tree in one of these craters. Find it and heal it. So I'm probably just going to blaze through this one. But as you can see, um, from the last <laughs> time, I move a lot faster. I jump a lot farther. I it, That's that's just that's just fun to me. <laughs> that's just plain fun. Is that ability to just completely just jump and, and boost and get to where you want to go now like you know you move so quickly you move uh you, you can jump so far it's just that's like the the main bit of fun i think <laughs> it's just being able to jump that far also that cool effect um when you land on the ground from a far height it does like a shockwave effect and you actually saw it like make a crater right there that's cool that's something you don't really see in a lot of games is that it actually makes a crater and i completed the game <laughs> Not the game, but the level. And so I'm able to go ahead and just gather up the rest of this uh, energy. Let's see. Am I missing something? Energy balls found. There's still some energy balls I have yet to find. But I don't think I can get out now, actually. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I'm out. Okay, cool. Let's see if I can find the rest of those energy balls. I'm not sure where they are. They might be anywhere. No, 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 no! Ah! Uh, ah! Why did I even jump this close to this crater? I know that it's here. Why did I even get this close in the first place? Let's see. They must be in each crater, I'm guessing. So that's there's one here, and then there's one here. No? Ah, there it is. Okay. They're not on the radar. Those sneaky peats. That's the thing, right? So anyway, um, <laughs> let's see if I can find the rest of these. That, I, yeah, I guess that's the last one. All right, good. And now let's just launch ourselves into the energy. Yes. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade Dash again. Shield. Pick up distance, yeah. So yeah, it's just that feeling of really getting better, really get running, you know, faster, jumping farther. That's that's like the main thing to me is um, that gets that really makes this fun and really makes it stand out. Is the fact that it gets it, it's such a you know moving game, dynamic kind of fast paced game. All right, so I'm supposed to destroy some sort of large flanks. Let's get over there. Water fills up in this cat in this little thing. And before I couldn't do it, I, I would have to like swim through it faster. But if you upgrade your dash completely, you can actually run on it, with, uh, run on water, which is a pretty cool, pretty cool thing. You know, especially because it was so slow before. Now I have the exact same movement speed. Um, you know, pretty much regardless of whether I'm whether I'm on water or, or on the ground or whatever. And that's, you know, again, cool. It's just very cool to, to actually see a game almost like you're upgrading superpowers in this case. Come on, come come on back. Let me just let me just kill you real quick. Sorry, but I need that point. Or those points. And let's get this power, which is like a shield thing. There we go. Let's see if we can't beat this flakes real quick. 
are these things. It's very interesting because this game is a... Uh... Whoa, whoa, what was that? Whoa. He just like, he just went like, and just shot like 18 times. Like, whoa. <laughs> he was just, he was like, if I'm going down, I'm taking you with me, all Star Fox style. Um, yeah. It's very interesting because this game is a... Uh... Very interesting because this game is a pretty good representation of like how to make. I mean, it, it well it, it balances. Come on, it's pretty good because this game balances um, you being able to fight better with you know the time that you get points because you, it's not like an RPG where you just get points by be beating enemies. You get points mainly by like getting energy and and beating enemies and stuff, but only in the level. So like once you do it once, you can't really go back and get like you know another eight thousand points from the level. So it's like. You kind of have to pace your upgrades and, and upgrade kind of sensible things. Like, if you put it all in a dash, you better be ready to, like, run faster and not really stand there and take hits. Because, you know, if you don't put it in shield as well, then you're going to have trouble. I don't think I put... I think I put it in shield once. And you can see I'm already, like, almost at half health. Just from a couple of hits. So you really do have to, like, pay attention to how you're... You're, uh... Putting your points in. You know, what you're putting your points into. How you're you know, kind of playing it. That's an interesting thing, too, is that you can kind of play it different ways. I didn't really have to use the dash at all right there. I mean, you know, it, it's not like I need to use the dash to, uh... It's not like you need to use the dash to, uh... It's not like I really need to use the dash. I didn't really need to use the dash right there at all. Um, I, you know, I... I could have just sat there and kind of dodged a little more, but I just completely ran around and, you know, blasted uh, <laughs> the best I could. So anyway, um, this time, let's go ahead and I I'll just continue. So th that's mainly what I wanted to point out was just that upgrading system. It really feels, you know, tactile and interesting that you, you know, get this point, these points from the levels, you upgrade your abilities, you really do feel faster, you really do feel stronger. You know, it, it's a very noticeable change. And you really, you know, want each upgrade that you get. Mainly the dash and the super jump are like the main ones that you really would like. So this is acid. I'm not supposed to be able to uh, fall into it, but if I run fast enough, it's, it just can't touch me in time. We'll just, let's just grab this. Revitalize that tree. Ah. Got it. Let's see if we can't find any more. Uh, come on, come on. I think that's it. Uh, there's still a little more, but they might be in the acid, and I can't really get into. Oh, I can do them. Okay. Uh, I'm not really trying to do a let's play here. I'm just trying to <laughs> point out the the good points. I actually finished this game. Ah man, um, that's actually, actually a good example of the terrain weapon. That's a terrain weapon that you do get uh, later in the game. The ability to like make these hills, and it, it's really, really quite a powerful weapon. Um, you know, really cool weapon that you do get. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of leave uh, some of this for for other people to find and play around with. I don't want to spend too much time just. Uh, showing the game off so uh, I'm gonna cut it here and just say you know the controls not not too bad but the gameplay itself really simple you know run and jump run and shoot kind of gameplay and I really like that the upgrade system works really well it's really tactile you feel like each upgrade gets you faster you saw from the beginning of the video to the end of this video basically how much faster how much more um, kind of you know powerful I got at just in that little time of like what maybe 20 minutes that I've been uh, recording th these you know sections so it's just um, it's really an interesting game a really interesting kind of examination of like what makes the upgrade system work well what makes you know each upgrade what makes it so that you want each upgrade 
Um, it's an interesting balance between wanting, like having an upgrade be weak at the beginning and it get more powerful with each successive, like, you know, step, as well as, you know, you not wanting the player to feel too powerful at the end, you not wanting him to feel too weak at the beginning. It's kind of interesting because you, at the beginning, you don't want the player to feel like he's weak. You don't want the player to feel like I, I'm, I'm incapable with the weapons and skills I have. You want him to feel like, okay, I can kind of handle the, these guys, but then you get an upgrade and it's like, man, this is awesome. I, you know. I can handle this guy, you know, with my hand behind my back. But then you find another guy that's that this upgrade is meant for, and so it's like, okay, you kind of learn. That's kind of how Metroidvania, uh, Metroid ish or Metroidvania games are similar, uh, or work similarly. How you know at the beginning it's like, well, I have a charge shot. This you know this thing can take out you know anybody. You don't really know that there's enemies that don't take charge shots, or enemies that need to be frozen first, or enemies that need to have be missiles first, and enemies that need to do this or that and so each weapon kind of comes together to make it more you know uh you know hard kind of a, a more difficult situation in a sense you know like in zelda there's certain um I, i'm talking about the game Boy color ones i guess i may be in, in every zelda but there's like certain rock enemies or, or statue enemies that basically you need to use the bow and arrow to shoot in the eye like otherwise i don't think you can defeat them maybe using nah, i don't even know but that's just an example of like, you know, you need to use a specific weapon to fight a specific enemy. And so it kind of makes you feel like, okay, I'm getting more capable because I have different weapons for different situations. Whereas before it's like, I'll just stab him. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just slash. I got this. Eh, eh, eh. It's like, it doesn't, that doesn't work for everybody. It's, it's not, that's not an option. So it's an interesting, like I said, trade off between you want the player to feel weak at the beginning. Or, I'm sorry, you don't want the player to feel weak at the beginning, like, like he's not capable of playing the game, or the player, the ca character is weak. You want him to feel like, okay, I'm getting my bearings, I can handle this, I can handle these guys, more and more. And then, he gets different upgrades that enable him to do more and feel more powerful, and, and battle better, or fight better. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm talking about mainly in a combat combative sense. But then at the other hand of, of things, you introduce other enemies that necessitate these weapons. Because otherwise, if you just had a Goomba, you know, run, walking toward you all the time, and it's like, well, I could, you know, hit him with my sword, or I could hit him with a missile, or I could hit him with a bow, or I could hit him with a boomerang, or I could hit him with a, you know, freeze rod, or a freeze gun, or I could hit him with a, you know, freeze grenade, or I could hit him with a, you know, napalm missile, or I could hit him with, you know, it's like, well, you don't really, you just need, the, you really only need your sword, but they give you a ton of, you know, weapons for one guy, one case. And that gets boring. You want to make sure that the game never gets boring. But at the same time, you don't want to make sh you don't want to make it so that uh it necessitates a lot of hot swapping, which is something that I I should learn from for Valkyrie in particular because in Valkyrie you can only equip one or two weapons. I'm sorry, two weapons, two items at a time. Two weapons, two items, a weapon and an item, whatever. And I, I would like to have more enemies that have like, you know, oh, you need to, you know, throw a grenade first, or you need to, you know, um, you know, do whatever, block his attack first, or you need to do this, or you need to do that, whatever the, you know, case is to, to kind of set up your attack with a normal weapon. But at the same time, I don't want it to be where it's like, okay, you need to equip these two weapons for this guy, and the other guy in the room, you also need to equip these two other weapons, where you're doing a lot of, you know, press start, Go to your menu, press this, go that, okay, go back, play, okay, press start, go to your menu, switch your weapons out, go back. You don't want to, you know, make it a chore the, for the player. It's interesting, because you, you kind of have to have this um, give and take of, you don't want it to be too boring, but at the same time, you don't want it to become a chore. You want it to be varied, but at the same time, you don't want it to be too complex. Uh, you don't want the player to feel weak at the beginning, um, where he feels like I'm I'm wasting my time because I'm clearly underprepared for the world that I, I, I'm playing. At the same time, you don't want the upgrades to feel like, why are you giving me these upgrades? They're cool, but I never need any of them. So that's kind of it's kind of an interesting dynamic. Um, this is a case of the upgrades feeling pretty useful, feeling pretty powerful. Um, at a certain point, I personally like once you get your super jumps, your dash, you upgrade your shield, and you get your um, Either a Eruptor or the other weapon that pushes the train down. Spoiler, <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> sorry, sorry if you like didn't know what, what weapons you know you would get in the course of the game. But you get a weapon that either pushes the train up or pushes the train down. Once you get those weapons, it gets a lot easier because you can charge up your your Eruptor, the weapon that pulls uh, 
uh, terrain up or the other one that pushes it down. You can dash, jump over an enemy, and do that long jump. And while you're basically flying over the enemy, throw that bomb and have it like very slowly descend and just obliterate weaker enemies. It's fun. It's a nice way to play the game for me. I like it. But um, it kind of makes it a little easier. And I think that... But then there's other enemies that are like flying or things like that that make it a little more difficult that it doesn't really work on. So I think that if anything, I would like to see this game really like uh, develop more levels, more of an open world feel because it feels kind of blocked off and like each level is kind of like, you know, this is a level, that is a level, this is a level. Like they're not really connected. They don't really feel like uh, part of a world. It's just like missions. Like I said, select a mission. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's just, I would like to see more of an open world, you know, kind of Metroidvania use for these powers because it's like, you know, raising the train or lowering the train, what does it matter to me? You know, if, if I'm, all I'm really doing is fighting, you know, uh, healing infected trees, finding energy, um, orbs slash, um, fighting flanks, fighting, you know, aliens or, or monsters, whatever, then it doesn't really matter if I have this weapon that raises the terrain or that weapon that lowers the terrain. It's like, you know, there's no terrain dependent I enemies. That would be an interesting thing because then you would have a reason to like, okay, I need to, you know, push the terrain down here because this enemy will be un Ill, uh, unvul unvulnerable, non-vulnerable, invincible if, um, <laughs> if they're, you know, if I try to attack on the same level or above them. So then you, you know, would dig down so you can hit them from below. Something like that. Just to like make it so like you do actually have to use the weapons more logically and, and intelligently. Um, but yeah, this is a pretty good game. It's pretty fun for five bucks. It's, I, I think you should, you know, go ahead and buy it. It's, it's really fun. I'd like to see the developer make more of these. Um, it's kind of old, I think. So I hope the developer would, uh, consider making more of these or perhaps he's already started on making more of these or, or just making other games in general. All right. Well, that's basically what I wanted to cover. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, watching Let me go ahead and just kind of try to examine this game in, in more of a sense of what can we learn from uh, uh, learn from it and, and gain for our own game development slash you know knowledge uh, game development experience slash knowledge well thank you very much for watching and uh, if you have any games that you would like to see kind of checked out I'm not sure if I really qualify for like you know do a let's learn from you know this game or that game but I'd like to you know try just looking at games and and learning from them and saying, yeah, I like that. Yeah, that could be improved on or whatever the case is. So anyway, uh, thanks very much for watching. And uh, yeah, yeah, you have a good time and maybe you can go ahead and purchase Caster or you have it and never played it and you can try it out and have fun with it. All right. See ya.